G'day guys, we're in the middle of a massive five day tops trip. We've been fly camping away along these tops here and we're carrying on along behind the camera there. It's been pretty bloody awesome, but the whole point of the trip was to cut down some weight and go lightweight already. Yes, pretty much this video is going to break down the um, stuff that we left at home to make all our stuff in a 48 litre pack. Um, yeah, it's been a few days like Mitch just said. If you want to check out the hunting so far, uh, yeah, it'll be linked up above. But if not, yes, yeah, sit back and enjoy. So before we get into it, just thought it's important to note that we're sponsored by a lot of the brands we're about to talk about. Uh, but we've been using this gear for years, well before we started doing any of the YouTube stuff. These are our pick of the litter, this is the gear that we've always wanted to use. And we approached a lot of these brands and, and just kind of got lucky that they wanted to work with us too. Yeah, so by no means don't think we're trying to sell any shit. Um, but yeah, like Mitch said, we really do trust this gear. We put it through the absolute ringer and um, it all sends up really well. So yeah, not trying to sell anything, but this is a gear that we took in our trip. We find it really useful, really tough gear, so yeah. Bloody hell, let's get into it. Right, so the first way we've cut a bit of weight is uh, we've opted for just a fly as opposed to a tent. Um, haven't really done too much research, but I think this twin needle one's about 850 grams uh, compared to a tent, which is like 2.4 or something. Um, we'll pop up the text below. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. These flies just give you the opportunity to camp wherever you want. We've got a pretty um, interesting campsite here. The tent would have been a bit of a tight squeeze for, but um, yeah, we managed to make it work. It's been a lot of fun fly camping. We've definitely learned a few things that we'll let you know for the video. So this fly is the the heavier weight option out of the two flies that Twin Needle do. So this one's rated to 70D, uh, whereas the lighter weight one's 30D, and it's just about half the weight. It's probably one of the lightest flies that I've seen on the market, but unfortunately we didn't get to test it out this trip because um, <laughs> they all sold out when we got in there and we left it a bit late. So this trip was all about going lightweight. It's the um, fly, but we also got sent out these Domex super light halo sleeping bags. We've been really, really impressed. So these super lights, we're a little bit worried we're gonna lose quite a bit of warmth on, um, especially fly camping so high on the tops. But um, no, they've actually been really, really impressive. Uh, the first night, <laughs> they got a little bit soaked due to some very poor management sleeping inside the pack liner as a makeshift div bag, but that just condensated. Um, but last night, we just slept in the sleeping bag itself and it was bloody warm, eh, already. Yeah, it was actually super good. We did get a bit of moisture just from, we're on a bit of a slope and we're just pushing into the fly. So there's a bit of moisture, but um, it's actually really impressive. The down on these has been treated with the waterproofing, so it won't absorb water, and it actually dries out super quick, and it also retains its heat when wet, which is, yeah, pretty incredible, really. Yeah, we're super shocked. So these are rated to, like, negative three as a comfort, and they only weigh, like, 800 grams. So for the pack for this trip, we decided to go for the Tatonka Norix 48 litre. So it's a hell of a lot smaller than what we're used to, um, but it's by no means, like, a serious lightweight pack. Uh, there's much lighter ones out there from other companies and even Tatonka's just brought out their own uh, lightweight models. But what we do like about this pack and the reason we opted for it is it's still got that Tatonka framing on it. So it's a really durable, sturdy pack and it's super comfortable under heavy loads. Um, although we're aiming to go lightweight this trip, uh, with the smaller pack size, we've still got quite a bit of heavy gear, the camera gear especially, and if all goes to plan, we'll be carrying out a stag's head or a chamois head or something. So. We want the option to be able to carry a heavier load and still have that comfort. And we've been super impressed by it so far. Um, we've got four nights worth of gear in here, so we've got all of our fly camming stuff, all of our food, and it's been pretty snug, but we haven't really had to strap stuff all over the outside like we could have. So yeah, all in all, we're really happy with this pack for um, this intended purpose. It'll be really good for sort of day trips um, and like raw hunting, like flying type trips, but even for this, it is a bit of a versatile thing that it can handle sort of a four night trip with all of our gear and yeah it's done the job really well. Right, uh, so then we come to food. Uh, the way we've kind of cut down this weight with food is we've gone for D high meals. Um, you can obviously buy them from pretty much anywhere. Uh, they're pretty expensive though, which is kind of the main turn off. So I actually ended up buying a dehydrator and have started doing my own meals. Um, usually it's pretty basic, just like a mince with a kind of tomato sauce and a bit of veggies, but they honestly taste mean. Personally, I think they're better than most tea highs, uh, as long as you get the right brew. And um, yeah, it will save you a lot of money in the long run. Probably cost about, oh, I had a, had a guess, $8 to make one of these, as opposed to 16 to 18 for a tea high. So yeah, about half the price. But yeah, it's been quite fun to do. You can kind of play around. It's pretty crazy we can dehydrate. You can do, yeah, I haven't bought this trip, but you can do fruit, uh, most meats, vegetables, yogurt. You can, yeah, almost dehydrate anything. So yeah, we'd really consider getting one if you want to kind of cut down your weight and also cut down price. 
Yeah, all set potato flakes. <laughs> Mother <laughs> was dehydrated when you buy these. <laughs> So compared to Reddy's homemade meals, uh, the alternative lightweight sort of stuff are these dehys. There's a whole bunch of brands that do them in New Zealand. Uh, this one here is Real Meals. And I'll be honest, they're really, really tasty. Super easy, super fast. Um, the only issue is they're pretty expensive. So like for our usual weekend trips, it's all good to pay. I think they're about $18 for a meal. It's cheaper than a meal out anyway, but um, if you're doing like a week long trip, it's pretty hard to rationalize one of these per night. Hence why Reddy's bought a dehydrator and done that. Uh, the other option that we do for meals is the Go Natives. These are our absolute staple. They're, they're just the tastiest meals you can get on the hills, um, without a doubt. But the reason we haven't really opted for them on this trip is they're a lot heavier. So this here is 250 grams for the meal, and then you got an extra 60 grams for the mash. Um, when you compare that to this all-in-one meal for 110 grams, so uh, although it's it is heavier. Uh, they are extremely tasty and they've got another perk, um, really really good for water conservation. Uh, because your dehy meals they need you to add water to, if you're up on the tops like this and it's pretty dry, um, it can become a bit of an issue, whereas the Go Natives you just put it in a pot of water and heat it and then you can use that water for whatever you want and you've still got your meal ready. So yeah there's a strength to like all three of the meals, you've got um, price on the right there and then lightweight in the middle and then <laughs> to be honest taste on the left eh, without a doubt. But yeah, so that's sort of our breakdown on the foods we take on a trip anyway. So this here is one day's worth of food for us on the hills on this trip. Yeah, so we've gone for the, the dehy brekkie, um, nice and lightweight, pretty filling. Um, for snacks, pretty much an OSM, uh, peanut butter bar, what do you call it? Peanut butter slug, um, a chocolate bar, go native bar, couple of goos, and then um, for lunch, noodles, and a soup, sort of, that's sort of been floating around, we just sort of have it whenever and then obviously a dehy meal for dinner so yeah it's pretty light for a whole day's worth of food to be honest it's probably more than we need um, we've sort of ended up most days still got one of these lying around uh, so another thing we cut down weight on is the knife uh, i got myself a randy newberg here just a gerber uh, got multiple blades it comes in a little packet there and it's just yeah way lighter than way lighter than my ant the one i've been carrying around so. <laughs> yeah nicely interchangeable blades on it too so we can also cut down on the sharpener and just have those blades and if we get real terrible at butchery it won't matter. Alrighty, um, so we are hoping to film the whole gear breakdown out in the field, uh, up in the hills, but the last two days of the trip kind of turned into a couple of massive days on the feet, so we ran out of time. Um, so we're going to run through the last bits of kit uh, here at home. Going to start off with the bed rolls here. So for this trip I took the X-Pad Sinmat Ultralight uh, air mattress, so it's an inflatable air mattress. Super handy, as you can see, real compact, packs down nice and small, uh, and pretty damn lightweight. The issue we thought we were going to find with it is that because it's an air mattress, it quite easily could get punctured, um, especially just sort of camping up on the up on the tops of rocks and all sorts of bushes around. Because of that, we um, were really careful with where we camped, and we were putting the bed rolls into uh, those yellow stuff sacks as well as a floor mat. Um, so you had no issues with getting punctures on the field, uh, which we're really happy about and it was super versatile. The, the positives of these is they inflate quite large, so they're really comfortable even on uneven terrain, and it's quite well insulated. I use this pretty much all year round. This is, I think it's meant to be a three season air bed, but I've used it in the winter and it's been pretty good, um, compared to your one already. Yeah, so I've gone for the um, Thermarest sleeping pad. Uh, yeah, like Mitch said, he's got the inflatable. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, as Mitch said, it's definitely not as comfortable. It's just, it's literally like 10 mil thick, um, so it's you kind of feel every single rock and hole and everything you're sleeping on. Um, and they are a wee bit bulkier too, um, which yeah, is kind of a bit annoying. But about the same weight though, eh? Yeah, about the same weight, and it's not a bad thing, it's kind of a bit more, I guess, robust in mixes. I was a little bit more um, carefree. carefree, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that it probably won't get a hole, or it could get a hole, but not as lucky as mixes. Uh, but yeah. I do seem to rate it, um, I think next time I probably will get an air mattress, but uh, yeah, if you're trying to shop between the two, if you're not worried about space, and you're not really, really worried about um, putting holes in it, probably this is the best thing to go for. Yeah, and just putting our two cents in about air beds in general, uh, air mattresses in general. Uh, this x one here, I've been using for about three years now. Um, they're bloody awesome, they're super cheap, which is why I like x It gives you everything that something like a Thermarest is going to give you, but for a better price point. Uh, the only issue is, I've had two of these now. I had the first one for about two and a half years and it ended up leaking from the seams. 
Um, I don't know if it's a cheaper make or if it was just some bad gear maintenance on my behalf. You, we left it inflated in the tent on all our hunts. Uh, you, you should not do that. Yeah, you meant to let all the air out and deflate them so that when it starts heating up it's not expanding and putting pressure on all those seams. Um, so it might have been our own fault for that, but yeah, for a bang for your buck, these experts seem pretty bloody good. Right, now to our cooking essentials. Um, yeah, we definitely cut, cut down a lot of weight this trip on uh, all of our cooking supplies. As you guys probably know, we're quite into doing quite extravagant feeds while we're out in the bush. Uh, usually take, yeah, all sorts of shit, but we've really cut down this time. Um, basically our cooking stuff was, we had a jet boil, just one jet boil between us, and just a wee cooker that folds out and attaches to the gas boil like this. Um, we also only took this two small gas bottles, I think these are 200 euro grams and we took it 101 each. Um, mm. It was enough just, but yeah, we got pretty close to running out by the end of it. Um, and then lastly, we saved on a bit of room by just taking one pot and uh, I actually went and bought a Cedar Summit uh, collapsible pan slash pot. Uh, this thing's awesome, I really rate it. Um, I was a bit skeptical where how it was going to go, but it actually worked out mint and um, yeah, like I said, it saves you up heaps of room. We normally yeah. take these, so. Yeah, these are the Domex pops, and they're, they're really lightweight and awesome, but yeah, they're huge. Takes up so much room in your pack. That was a, a massive game changer. And a hell of a lot more light too, so um, yeah, yeah. that's basically cooking stuff, other than our cutlery, and yeah, just mugs obviously, coffee. Yeah, and another thing we cut is so usually take a frying pan or two, because yeah, as we said, we like to cook up a good feed, so we got rid of that, and to be honest, we could pretty much do all of our cooking on a trip in a jet boil, especially if you're doing Dehyzer or go native type meals, all you need to do is boil some water and you're good to go. So one of those and one of those 100 gram um, smaller jet boil canisters would pretty much do one person for five days we found. But it gets pretty tight by the end of it. <laughs> Righty, now onto the clothes. So this is where we saved a hell of a lot of weight and a hell of a lot of space. We usually take a whole bunch of extra stuff, so we've got spares in case things get wet, or just some luxuries and nice, nice items of clothes built for different environments. But Pretty much a rundown of what we took. Um, three pairs of undies, could have, could have taken two, we only used two. Um, pair of shorts, pair of leg thermals and top thermals. Three pairs of socks, but probably could have only used two as well. Um, just nice to have one for around camp. A uh, puffer jacket, a uh, walking top, and then sort of like a, just a hunting lightweight t-shirt. Then a sort of a fleece, uh, this is the Sika heavyweight hoodie. A pair of gloves, which I didn't put on once, so it's probably not necessary in the summer months. Uh, and then a cap and a beanie, um, as well as our waterproofs. So this is all Sitka gear, we're sponsored by Sitka, but this is a really good time to talk about it. This is what it's made for. Like Sitka is super lightweight, it's high-end gear that performs for bugger all weight, really good bang for your buck in terms of, or bang for your weight really, um, and just really nice to wear and quite versatile gear. So yeah, we cut out quite a lot of stuff. Um, Another thing that Sitka does is these lightweight uh, rain gear. So this is the, the dew point um, range that they've got. Super lightweight and super thin. I was a bit scared getting it that it was gonna, gonna rip really easily, especially in sort of scrub bashing and like this, the harsh in New Zealand environment. Um, but it, it stood up pretty well. As far as the waterproofing goes and windproofing, it's just airtight, it's super good. It's made of that Gore-Tex stuff, so it's nice to wear, it's kind of, to some extent breathable, you're not going to like sweat in it too hard, but it's going to keep the water out. Um, Ready and I, this is where we had two different sets of gear. Um, as I said, the dew point stuff, I was a bit worried, is a little bit flimsy for what we do. So, Ready's got the storm front, I think it's called. I believe so, don't quote me on that, but um, yeah, it's just a lot more kind of heavy duty as opposed to this lightweight stuff. Um, yeah, once again, great pants, I really enjoy wearing them. Um, yeah, they're super tough. Uh, you can push bash to anything on them pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, you've got the, the heavier version of the pants, and uh, the same with the jacket. They're pretty much the exact same material, uh, but yeah, just a wee bit tougher than the lightweight stuff. Not too sure on the exact weights of the differences, but um, the size difference is pretty big. the packability that um, makes this lightweight stuff a whole lot better. But yeah, still great. Really would uh, recommend this in like wintertime for sure, and uh, yeah, especially snowy conditions and stuff. Uh, yeah, this really would be your go to, I reckon. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. Um, and other than that, obviously, we've got boots, so we just got the lower tibets for this trip. Definitely not your most lightweight boot, but as you saw, it's pretty steep terrain. Um, so these are just your, your all terrain, so they're bloody good for what we're doing. Um, essentials, Crocs. <laughs> Didn't do any river crossings, but just having camp shoes, they'd just yeah. take them everywhere. Yeah. And just a pair of gaiters, which didn't get used all that much in the situation. Uh, and lastly, probably the most important piece of kit, Rifle walkers camp shirt. Yeah, 
grand one, 35 bucks. Essential on any trip. <laughs> a shameless plug, but yeah. That's pretty much all the gear we had. Um, nice to have a camp top so you don't stink out your mates. Yeah. And yeah, if you have any questions about any of the gear, just fire it down in the comments below and we'll answer it and get all the weights and stuff in there. All uh, right, moving on to our kind of, I should say, essentials or kind of the kind of odd bits we had that we kind of needed. Um, got sunglasses here, a couple of spare boot laces, uh, paracord, extremely handy when you go like, fly camping for obviously tying the fly up and uh, just handy for tying animal heads on and whatnot. Um, strapping tape, pretty important, as well as first aid kit. Um, you should have stuff in there like some painkillers or maybe some Voltaren for if you have a serious injury. Um, yeah, super important. Um, some personal hygiene stuff, chapstick, absolutely essential, as well as some paw paw, good for like um, blisters and stuff like that. Uh, got sunscreen, uh, good old toothbrush, because you cut the hand off. <laughs> Cut a bit of weight out and uh, opted for a smaller toothpaste tub than usual. So uh, yeah, just cutting down weight wherever we can. <laughs> and uh, also this water filter. You probably have seen a wee bit of this already, but um, yeah, there's an awesome bit of kit. I think it's about 80 bucks for one of these and uh, a cinch bit of kit. It came, came strip. Yeah, it came in so handy. We yeah. drank out at one time that was a bit warm and a few yeah. tap holes swimming around, but yeah, you can literally drink pretty much any water from one of these things, so yeah, for top strips, especially in summertime, it's just essential, otherwise, yeah, we would yeah. be bugging. And speaking of that, um, opted for a camel pack this trip, and we go for the 3-litre camel pack, it's almost essential, to, especially top stuff, to be able to carry as much water as possible. Usually we carry like an extra one and a half litre bottle each, so we're a little bit tight on water a couple of days, but yeah, being able to carry a lot of water with you, we, we didn't find water a lot, so yeah, super handy, and then obviously just a rain cover, which Thankfully we didn't have to use because we had some stunning weather. These are two bits of kit we're not going to go on any trip without. Um, I think that these are safety essentials and that everybody needs to have one and a, a good one at that. Number one, head torch. This is the Lenzo MH10. A good head torch is going to save your ass. Um, as you would have seen, we shot the stag on last light, had to cut it up and had an hour and a half to get back to camp. It can get really disorientating in the hills with a smaller head torch. Um, I tried doing it a couple of times and got terribly lost. So. Get yourself a good head torch, you're going to be able to find home, it's handy to have around camp and it's nice to be able to rely on it if things really do turn to pop. Yeah, and uh, also obviously Garmin, um, we use the Mini for our trip to save weight uh, as per, but this one is actually the Explorer Plus. Um, yeah, also a very important bit of kit, uh, doubles as a personal locator beacon so you can hit the SOS button if you need it right out of there. Um, also you can text back home and get weather updates and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I don't know if the Explorer is really an essential, but um, you definitely need to be carrying some sort of PLB um, or yeah, some sort of locating uh, device in my opinion. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, certainly yeah. not do even for day trips. Um, just takes one slip for an accident to happen and yeah, if you've got no cell, so cell phone exception, you're just going to be lying there waiting. So um, yeah, yeah. Here's one bit of kit for both of these. Uh, so one's the hunting kit, start with the rifle. Uh, this is the Sarko 308 uh, A7. It's actually my old man's and this thing's bloody awesome. Uh, Old Faithful, taking it absolutely everywhere and it's never really let us down. Uh, on top of it, got the lure pole 3x9x40. Um, it would probably be nice to have something with a bit more magnification on it, uh, but with it being a 308, it sort of stops us from shooting out too far anyway. Um, and on the front, just a gunwork suppressor. And firing through it is a game head 150 gram, just the Sarko factory rounds. Turns out they shoot really well through the Sarko. Yeah, and um, another kind of essential in the hunting kit is our binos here. Uh, we've got Mitch's here, which is the Vortex 8x42 Talons. Um, I've got Vortex as well, just 8x40s. And uh, Chris actually has some really nice Nikon rangefinder binoculars, which are yeah, pretty sick, but yeah, a lot more expensive than our ones. <laughs> uh, and another very important bit of kit is the rangefinder. Just got a um, 6 hour rangefinder here. Um, yeah, it's an essential really. You just don't want to be guessing how far things are away because it's never really what you think it is. Got that wrong a few times. <laughs> uh, and to carry it all, uh, this is the twin needle bino harness. And honestly, one of the best pieces of kit we've got our hands on. Um, really, really useful, uh, especially with the lighter weight packs. It was nice to be able to have your binos and your range finder out the front. They're taking up less space in your pack, and it's really nice to have a bino harness on rather than having something dangling around your neck. Found it gets super annoying. Um, haven't really looked back since. On top of it, it's fully customizable, so you can get a whole bunch of different uh, attachments. They're all on the little molly strap system. So here we just got a range finder one and one for the Garmin. And there's also this one here. It's sort of good for like knives or snacks or um, for us bloody cameras. 
Uh, and another thing that they're like bringing out soon is a little um, bipod holder. So these things are really cool, um, especially for these newer, lighter weight, smaller, compact bipods. Sort of means your bino harness can pretty much become a backpack for a hunt um, and just nice to wear. Uh, on that note, <coughs> we didn't actually have this on the trip, I've uh, been given it since, but this is the MTN Gear mountain bipod. And this thing is bloody mint, uh, super lightweight carbon fibre, uh, fully adjustable, it tilts, it swivels, uh, and it extends out. It's just a really, really handy piece of kit. Uh, we fired three shots over it so far and it's, it's been spot on so far and just really useful to have. So yeah, that's pretty much all the hunting kit we took um, on the trip. Right, next on to our camera gear. Uh, obviously this stuff isn't essential for everyone kind of going out, but um, yeah, to give you guys the content that we do, we have to carry all this heavy, silly stuff. Um, yeah, Mitch, what do we carry? Yeah, we've got like five cameras pretty much that we film with. Um, so you've got the Nikon P1000, that's our zoom camera, that's what we get all our animal footage with. Bloody awesome for what it is, point and shoot. Um, got my uh, DSLR here, this is pretty entry level, but Nikon D3400. Also have a spare lens on it, so we're carrying quite a lot of that stuff. Two GoPros, awesome for time lapses, great on the rain, time warps, all that etc stuff. And then the drone, got the DJI yeah. Mavic Mini 2. Mini 2, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then bought ourselves a quite a nice carbon fiber tripod. So together, this is a hell of a lot of weight that you don't have to carry. <laughs> but just to show you what goes into it, that's pretty much what we get, um, and all the spare batteries and power banks that we need to keep it charged so yeah a lot of shit a lot of shit yeah <laughs> this is what makes our pack a hell of a lot heavier than it needs to be and it's probably what's made our lightweight packs look not all that lightweight <laughs> alrighty so Reddy and I just came back from a, a five day winter trip uh, and we took the Bison 100 litre so this here is pretty much what we usually take on a five day trip uh, we had a few luxuries in there a couple of good bits of food definitely ate well and sort of some extras like the meat safe that we don't usually take but all in all, it came in at 35 kgs without water, uh, and that's pretty much what we carry on most of our trips. I'd love to say that we were trying to act tough for this video and add a whole bunch of stuff, but with the camera gear and everything we carry, it honestly, it's pretty much our usual. Uh, yeah, compare that to the Norox 48 litre, which we took in our lightweight trip uh, this year. Um, yeah, literally half the size, um, but it's still crazy. We can fit it in here. We pretty comfortably lived out of these for five days. Um, you do a weekend super easy. And the great thing about these is you actually don't compromise on the comfort. They've got the same framework and um, yeah, all kind of uh, waist belt and whatnot um, as the 100 litre. So yeah, great comfortable pack, but yeah, it's awesome carrying a lightweight pack as opposed to that heavy thing all the time. <laughs> yeah, to give you, we just thought we'd give you a bit of a, a visual um, demonstration of the difference. And on top of that, the lightweight pack on that trip weighed in at 18 kgs without water versus this at 35 kgs. So, Definitely felt the difference, eh? It really changed the game. We could go a lot further and go a lot harder. It was truly nice, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right, that was pretty much the full rundown of all the gear that we took. If you have any questions about any of the gear we just talked about, or any comments on what we could do better, let us know in the comments below. But for us, this was our first time actually trying to cut weight down, getting out of the 100 litre pack and into a 50 litre pack, and learn a few lessons, eh? Yeah, it's been a learning curve to say the least. Uh, learned first night that you don't sleep inside the pack liner or the sleeping bag. Uh, it just causes a condensate and you wake up with a yeah, rather wet sleeping bag. Um, we've got a few things we probably could cut down on. Um, just probably our clothes and food could be a bit lighter and uh, maybe a few other things. But yeah, that'll probably be next year's job, I think. Um, but other than that, I really loved it. Uh, it was actually weird, like, we didn't really think of, like, you'd feel that much difference, but having the lighter pack at the end of, like, a massive day, we weren't, like, cramping up or anything. It was just, yeah, like, huge. yeah, like, our bodies just weren't as, I guess, told from, you know, having a heavy pack all day. So, yeah, it was awesome having a light pack. Um, don't know if we went down the whole route with our big normal packs. No, nah, um, no, nah, I definitely wouldn't have made it. That was huge. Yeah. So. Um, other than that, the fly capping itself is a really cool way of doing it, um, especially in summer. It's awesome. A little bit more tedious than a tent, you know, like you can't just get back at night and you got your tent there with your bedroll and your sleeping bag is all set up, like the night we got back at the stag was pretty rough, we had a lot of stuff left to sort and it was already about midnight, but all in all, really cool experience, just being able to wake up and like, you open up, you're, you're right there, you can see your view, it's just, it's a cool place to be, um, but yeah, so we're hoping to do one of these trips probably every year from now on and every year we're going to try and cut the weight down a little bit better and refine it. So open to any suggestions from you guys because I know there's a lot of people out there that do this lightweight stuff. They're a hell of a lot better than this. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope you guys got a bit of bit of help out of seeing us give it a go anyway. Yeah. And if you did find this video helpful and you enjoyed it, uh, chuck us a like and subscribe. It helps us out heaps, and we're going to keep making these sorts of videos. So, now nah, cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and yeah, buy some merch. <laughs>、uh, second trip for the roar,、yeah. up on the tops now.、Um, the plan is we're another four days. We chased after some roaring red snags, eh?、Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> oh, holy! Yeah, if you're looking for an alternative to tenting, this is a great one. Nice man. Thanks, man. Look <laughs> out of there, man. Fuck, man. We're off to a flyer, buddy. Fuck, there must be some kind of rapid loopers in this one. I don't know <laughs> if I want to put it in a because. So as we mentioned, this trip was all the on like. Ah <laughs>、uh, yeah, so if you're interested to kind of learn how I make my、uh, own meals, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking professional at it. <laughs> oh, so. Ah、uh, yeah, so if you can actually learn how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you can、um, stick around and learn. It. <laughs> 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 That's the hardest thing we've ever、oh. filmed. Right, ready. So yeah, compared to Reddy's meals,、um, the other option is your, your fucking these things. Yummy. Now, if you do get stuck in the shit, they're pretty handy. <laughs> Aren't they, Reddy? Super handy. <laughs> the handiest. <laughs> <laughs> we're not good at this sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> fucking record. <laughs> Uh, on top of it, got the Liverpool three by nine, 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 mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Fuck man, that's hard. Thank that you. It's <laughs> <laughs> not great, eh? But we'll make it work.